nights ago we were talking about James Bond and I wanted to talk about James Bond with uh, my good friend Matt Delingo who knows a thing or two about James Bond. Welcome here Matt. Thank you very much. You are also a, a raving Beatle maniac. Mm -hmm. Came mm -hmm. out the same Guilty. year. Guilty. Same year? Same year? Uh, not quite. I think uh, 60, 61 was Dr. No. And the Beatles were still, they were together with Pete Best and they were um, Came together, but they hadn't hit. They didn't hit till like '63 in England, and then '64 in America. In the early '60s, you've got the Beatles, and you've got James Bond coming mm -hmm. over. We we just we just sold it back to you, but with an accent. It was good. The Beatles, they had a, such a big impression on the kids because they were so anti guys in suits and guys in short haircuts. And adults, adults love Bond because it was like, yeah, he was fighting the Cold War and everybody wants to be Bond. He was the more the grown-up thing. He was the more grown-up thing and, and the Beatles the more the kid thing. In the early part of the decade, Bond reflected, hey, here's our enemy, the Soviets. You know, we're fighting the Cold War and it's, it's you know, assassins. The darker side. Darker side. But Beatles are mopped up. But the yeah, Beatles are keeping it light and easy and keeping the kids going crazy. As the decade went on, the Beatles, who are in the real world, with Vietnam and... And then they started changing, and they they got a little darker, and they, they grew their hair out more, and, and uh, more anti-establishment. And to them, like Bond was the establishment. As the decade went on, and we got involved in Vietnam, you notice Vietnam is never mentioned in any Bond film. Right. Like they never deal, they never just they just don't deal with it. And then Roger Moore came along, who's awesome. I love Roger Moore. The, the movies just got a little bit more Atlantis. Yeah. Let's talk about that whole wave of Bonds. Sean Connery goes into. George Lazenby. George Lazenby. The George Lazenby, who was Australian, he was a male model, ne never had really any acting experience. Connery left because he only lived twice. He was on a press tour in Japan, and they asked him, hey, how do you like Japanese women? And he's like, I don't think much of them. You know, they hide their bodies under kimonos. Everybody freaked out. Like, there was a huge backlash. Uh -huh. right. And then he said, never again. He goes, I quit. And but... Never say never again. Never say never again. <laughs> <laughs> then they brought him back. Lazarus, he wasn't bad. That was on her... On a Majesty's Secret Service, Service, which is actually Service. one of the best movies. It was well made, and it was a big hit when it came out. It was one of the biggest money makers of the year. He didn't want to do it because his agent told him the spy genre thing is a thing is, is a theft. But he showed up at the premiere of the movie in London with long hair and sandals, looking like he just came from Woodstock. And everyone's like, this guy's no James Bond. They begged Sean Connery to come back. He did one more, Diamonds Are Forever. And then they got Roger Moore for Live and Let Die. But George Lasby made it easy for He was Roger the sacrificial Moore. lamb. Almost. Yes. Like, everyone was like, well, at least he's no George Lasby. And Roger Moore, he was a huge popular actor. He was on The Saints. He was on The Persuaders. Our generation's uh, Pierce Brosnan. And like Pierce Brosnan has said, he goes, I wasn't ready then. He goes, it's a good thing I didn't get it. Because the next two movies were Living Daylights and uh, License to Kill with Timothy Dalton, Timothy Dalton, who was also great, and he brought some toughness back to the role. Unfortunately, he got shitty movies. I mean, Living Daylights was good, but it was still the same team that was making the Roger Moore movies. So you had a director with who the would, same budgets, right? Same budgets, and it was, they were they were they did get a lower budget, right? Did they or did they? They, they, they it spent, just looks that way. It looks like if you look at if you look at Living Daylights and License to Kill. They look like TV movies. They switched out Roger Moore for Timothy Dalton. It was the same exact team. So meanwhile, you got Die Hard out, you got Terminator out, you got Rambo. It's like the action movies really took a big step up in mm -hmm. the 80s. They were kind of behind the times mm -hmm. at that point, which was a good reason, which is they took seven years off. Seven years between Timothy Dalton and Terminator? Yeah, seven years. Double oh seven years between License to Kill and Goldeneye. Tell the story. Tell the story about the, the premiere. Tell the story about the so story. So, Hollywood premiere. You know, the search lights and red carpet, the whole nine yards. We didn't give a fuck. We just wanted to meet Pierce Brosnan. Right. The premiere, it's like awesome. I'm looking like, a, you know, jeans and a leather jacket. And he walks by me and everyone's like speechless. And he looks kind of nervous and he's trying to be cool. And I just grab his arm and I'm like... <laughs> I'm like, hey, congratulations, man. I'm like, man, you got the job, man. I'm like, rooting for you since Remington Steel. And he's like, Phew. he's like, thanks, man. I hope you like the movie. <laughs> this gorgeous girl in the gown is behind him. And I'm like, Pierce, you're the best. And, you know, and, uh, and the girl's like, I know, he's pretty awesome, isn't he? And I'm like, you're all right, too. Let me let's go see a movie. I'll buy you popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> 
And she goes, I got to sit with my dad. She goes, I'm like, who's your dad? She goes, uh, it was Pierce's daughter. Goldeneye was great. Tomorrow Never Dies sucked. Remember Tomorrow this one with the guy's got diamonds in his face? Oh, and die Another Day. That dying. was terrible. Yeah. He was like, why don't we get Quentin Tarantino to, to direct Casino Royale? And it was kind of his idea. Which was a perfectly good movie already with Woody Allen. Ridiculous sci-fi over the top stuff. And so now they dialed it back with Daniel Craig. And these, movies, these new movies are great. Also directed by Martin Campbell, who reinvented the franchise with Goldeneye. Second one was a bomb. It was I didn't. A, I didn't hate it like everyone else Juan did. Uh, but a lot. Of, I hate that title. You know Which I mean? brings us Skyfall. To Skyfall. Yeah. yeah. What did you think of Adele's song? I thought she knocked it out of the park. I thought. I think it's amazing. I think it's the best Bond theme song. It's like Shirley Bassey level. It's and with her because or she's Moonraker level of of song. You know. You like, you like the Moonraker song? I think it's a good song. What song? The movie sucked. I thought it was Moon a good song. Moonraker. Why <laughs> Garbage did The World Is Not Enough, which I really liked. Well, that was the closest one to like the Shirley Bassey yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, the, uh, and then Madonna did the worst Bond song of all time. She, she did a great did one for Austin Powers. For that. James Bond, she does a horrible that. song. That's true, it's very true. Uh, what's his name from, uh, from um, Soundgarden, Chris Sound, Cornell. Chris Cornell. I love that song. Nah, I didn't I like it. it. I you didn't like, like it? it. No. no. You know my name! There's this to Adele, which I think was great. Right. Classic. How about the movie itself? Your first impression? First impression, good movie, not a great Bond movie. And I don't know why. I'm trying to put my finger on it. Yeah. It's a long movie, and it feels long, and that's a problem. And like, uh, it could have been a Bruce Willis movie. It could have been a Jason Statham movie. It... The stakes are very yes. personal. Yes, yes. And uh, he's, he does not save the world in this movie. He saves himself. He's I thought it was a great movie. It didn't feel like a Bond movie. Okay, this this is what I got a problem with, and it's the same thing with Star Wars. I didn't need three movies to explain Darth Vader to me. I didn't need, <laughs> I didn't need three movies. This is him as a boy, him as a as a, him as a teenager, and, and him becoming Darth Vader. I don't need to Especially know that. Especially if the three movies suck. suck. I don't need James Bond explaining to me. Pleasure to be your first guest on. Very big pleasure having you here. Pleasure's all mine, sir. What's the name of this again? This is uh, this has been a couple, couple nights, nights a week. week. Bow, 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 bow. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. <laughs>